Hi there. Thank you for joining me on our last study in 2 Peter. Today we are in chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 1 and go down to the end of the chapter, verse 18. And this will bring a conclusion to our study in 2 Peter. Peter is really encouraging us to walk in the things of the Lord, to walk in truth, not to be dissuaded by those who are not teaching the truth, but to follow the right teaching and not to be carried away with the air of lawless men that make you fall from your secure position with God that you would grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what we want to do. That's the whole purpose that we are doing these things, to help you to grow in your relationship and your understanding of Jesus. Thank you once again for joining me in our study in Second Peter, as I mentioned. We are in chapter 3 and we're starting at verse 1. This is Peter's letter that he's writing here and we'll just jump right in. We don't need the backstory here. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming he promised? Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. Peter is warning us here, right? He's telling us there are going to be those who come, right? There are going to be scoffers. There's going to be those following their own evil desires. People are going to come with teaching and they're going to say, well, where is the second coming? Where is the second coming? Making a mockery of Jesus, right? Where is the second coming of God? You know, things have gone on forever. And that's what it seems like. But, you know, when you read the Bible, when you look through the Bible and God gives his promises, then all of a sudden when there was time, all of a sudden everything's there. Right from the beginning of Genesis, God prophesied, and had his prophets speak about the coming Messiah. And people were looking for the Messiah. For 4,000 years, they were looking for a Messiah. But all of a sudden, one day, there was a visitation to God's people, right? To Zechariah, that Elizabeth was going to have a baby. And then there was another visitation to Mary and to Joseph, saying that they would have a baby. And that baby was the Messiah, the Messiah that was coming. God had a time when everything was ready, when everything was complete, the time was right there. And that's the same thing for us. That's the same thing with the end and the second coming of Christ. It is going to be a time that's going to happen, right? It's going to happen when everything is fulfilled. When God is ready, then it is going to come. So we must not lose patience waiting for what is happening but we need to walk in relationship with God because our relationship with God and our life in Christ is not about what's going to happen, but is about what is happening. Just like the father said to Abraham, when Abraham said to him at the burning bush, who should I say is coming? And God said, I am that I am. That is present tense. That is not future tense. It is not past tense. It is present tense. I am that I am. It is in the presence that God is with us. It is in the presence that we walk with Jesus. It is in the presence that the Holy Spirit is in us, alive and active. And we are in the present right now. We are walking with God. We're not looking for the future. We're not looking for when we die and go to heaven. That's why I don't really like... When people get up and they preach the gospel and then they say, if you accept Jesus today, then you will go to heaven when you die. True statement. However, it makes it sound like our life doesn't begin until we die. That our, our eternity doesn't begin when we die. And, and you can see people who follow that teaching, who has that in their heart, they never grow in their relationship for God because they're waiting for their relationship to start when they die. It is a true statement, but we don't accept Jesus so that we go to heaven when we die. We accept Jesus so we can 
have God now, that we can walk with him now, that we can abide in his presence now. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14 and 6. He is making a way for us to walk with the Father and to be with him and to be in that relationship now. And we walk with him, right? These scoffers and people who are coming are going to say, well, where is this promise? Where is this thing coming? Well, that can only affect us if we are looking for an end. We're not walking in what God wants for us right here, right now. Verse 5, he goes on, he says, But they deliberately forgot that long ago God's word, the heaven existed, and the earth was formed out of the water and by water. But these waters also, the world of that time, was diluted and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. This is what I'm saying. God has his time. He has his time for everything. This world is going to be burned up. This is what he's saying here. This present heaven and earth are reserved for fire are being kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. We know that this earth and this heaven is going to pass away. When it's talking about heaven, it's not talking about where God is. You have to remember there are three heavens, right? The third heaven is where God is, the throne room of God. The second heaven is the spiritual realm where the angels and the demons are fighting. The first heaven is the sky and the air that we have here. So these things are going to be burned up and destroyed and destructed in, in judgment, right? In judgment of the ungodly men. But do not forget this thing, dear friends, that the day of the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. We don't know God's timing. We don't understand for us, everything is about time. For God, time is not relevant. Time is not relevant in the spiritual realm. When we are in eternity and a million years have gone by, it's irrelevant to us because a million years is nothing. It, it doesn't even count compared to eternity. And we don't need time in the spiritual like we do in the physical. The Lord knows what he's doing, right? Verse 9, it goes on and says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. What a powerful verse he's saying here. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as we understand slowness. We think he's taking too much time. No, he's not taking too much time. He's being patient with you. He's waiting for you to get your life lined up. He's waiting for you to work on your relationship with him. He's waiting for you to walk with him in the things that he wants you to walk with. His patience with you is not wanting anyone to perish, but to everyone to come to repentance. He's waiting for us to come to repentance. He's waiting for the world to come to him, understanding that through Jesus we have salvation. To understand that through Jesus we can walk with him and have relationship with him. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. The day is coming. Don't look forward to it. Don't rush it here. God's patience is there for us so that we can come to him and we can walk. But the day of the Lord is coming. We don't know when it is. We don't know when that's going to happen. We can know the season. We can think that while well, things are getting worse and worse, maybe we're getting there. But we have no guarantee when it's going to happen. What's important is that we are walking with the Lord today. Amen. But in keeping with his promises, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. This is what we are looking forward. This earth is not going to be our home. There's going to be a new earth and a new heaven and a new Jerusalem. That's the church that's going to come down on there. And I don't know what that's going to look like. There's all kinds of speculation. Oh, people say it's going to be just like it is here on earth. No, I don't think so. I don't know what it's going to be like, but we need to trust the Lord that he is going to make it work, right? So, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless and blameless and at peace with him. 
That's what we are to be working on. We are to be working on that we are not walking in the things of this world, we are not walking in the things of flesh, but that we are blameless and that we are walking at peace with God, that we are walking at peace with Him, that our relationship is intact with Him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as your dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort. So they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. He's just talking like, Paul, this is the things that Paul wrote to you. This is... This is the things that Paul said. Peter is writing this letter. We believe it's after Paul was beheaded in Rome. And he's writing his letters to Asia uh, to encourage him. And so he's saying, this is the same way the letters that Paul wrote to you, speaking of these matters. Bear in mind, our Lord's patience means salvation. It means salvation to the world. It means salvation to those who are lost. It means salvation to those who are looking for something. Don't be in a rush to see the end come because be out there sharing the word of God with people so that they can come to the understanding of Jesus. Verse 17 says, Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from your secure position, but grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory now and forever. Amen. This is what we are to be working for. Dear friends, since you already know this, be on your guard. Be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless men. Don't listen to false teachers. Don't listen to false prophets. Don't follow people who are trying to lead you in a wrong direction. But focus on the things of God. Focus on what God has for you and grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The knowledge of Jesus, the Savior, grow in His knowledge, grow in your relationship to Him, grow in the things that He has for you, and then you will be able to handle the Word of God rightly and share the Word with many people. And to Him, glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Glory and honor to God. This brings us to the end of our study of 2 Peter, just a short letter. Next time we come together, we'll start our study in 1 John. And 1 John is a wonderful study for us as well. But thank you for being with us in this study of Peter, 2 Peter. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for this study that we've had. We thank you that you are teaching us. Father, help us not to follow the way of false teachers, but help us to to walk in the things that you have for us. Father, not to get discouraged with the timing of things, but to know that we are just walking with you and that we are um, abiding in the time that you have for us. Father, help us to use that time to advantage the kingdom of heaven. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to share these teachings. And may it bless each and every one. In Jesus' name I pray. My name is Stuart Gould. It's been such a pleasure to bring this study of 2 Peter to you. I'm looking forward to doing 1 John. Remember, God loves you and so do I. Okay, girls, take us home.